Television. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa underscored the dangerous challenges facing the Islamic countries and people, saying it requires greater coordination, consultation, and cooperation. Addressing the Islamic Summit on Istanbul on behalf of His Majesty the King, the Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa said that confronting such challenges will prevent threat to the security, stability, and the future of Islamic countries and peoples in unity and solidarity. His Majesty the King stressed the threat of terrorism that targeted the lives and money of property of people in various countries of the world and which has to be confronted with all the efforts and capabilities. His Majesty the King stressed that the threat of terrorism that targeted the lives, money and property in the world has to be confronted with all efforts. His Majesty the King said Bahrain has suffered and still is suffering su from subversive acts of terrorism supported by foreign parties including the Islamic Republic of Iran and the Lebanese Hezbollah movement. His Majesty the King renewed Bahrain's strong condemnation of terrorism in all its forms and manifestations, reaffirming its commitment to the fight against the terrorism and the threat it poses to the security of the world. He called for developing cooperation among all the nations of the world to ensure eradication of terrorism. It also called upon the international community and the local and international agencies to declare war on terrorism in order to protect the interests of the lives and safety of people. His Majesty said that the peace process in the Middle East has become more complicated in the light of the continuing Israeli policies and practices and the continued blockade of Gaza and its repeated aggression to the Palestinian people and the Islamic sanctities, particularly Al-Aqsa Mosque. His Majesty the King wished the summit to come out with a unified, coherent and effective stance towards the just Islamic issues to achieve the aspirations and hopes of their people in the development, stability, progress and peace for all. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salma bin Hamad Al Khalifa, represented Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II at the 152nd Sovereign Parade at the Royal Military Academy Sandhurst. Upon arrival, His Royal Highness was received by the Commandant of the Royal Military Academy Sandhurst, Major General Paul Nansen.
At the start of the ceremony, the Bahrain Royal Anthem was played. Then His Royal Highness the Crown Prince inspected the parade.
Then, and as part of the procedure, the flag of completed graduation term was handed to the new term. Then His Royal Highness the Crown Prince delivered the keynote address. Your Royal Highnesses, Commandant, Officer Cadets, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. It is indeed a great honor to stand before you representing Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth at today's Sovereign's Parade. Congratulations to you all. Completing the commissioning course is a great achievement. I know how much hard work today represents, and having been here as a parent, I know also how much your accomplishment means to your families and friends, and how proud of you they are. Many of our officers in the Bahrain Defense Force trained at Sandhurst, including my father, His Majesty King Hamad. We are very proud of this long tradition. It underlines the very strong bonds established between us 200 years ago. These long-lasting ties across security, economy, and society are continually strengthened through an active partnership between our two nations. Today marks a vitally important day for you all as you leave Sandhurst and embark on your careers in changing times. You are stepping forward on a path of significant importance as leaders at the front end of new conflicts that offer profound challenges to our modern societies. As military officers and defenders of our nations and our values, you will, you will take on great responsibility. Where you fight, you will fight to secure a greater peace. You will operate in uniquely uh, testing circumstances, often against those pursuing an agenda of hatred, discord, and destruction. And you will not lose your humanity in the face of this challenge. The deep capacity for humanity is a defining characteristic of officers trained at Sandhurst. Even in the most testing of circumstances, it is a vital underpinning of your success. You will make difficult judgments, often with incomplete information. Those judgments will have profound effects on those around you, those you lead, those who are fighting you, and the many civilians who are at risk in modern conflicts. You will remember that you are dealing with human beings with human lives. You will strike hard when you need to, but treat those under your command as well as those under your protection, regardless of race, creed, or color, with consideration and dignity. That responsibility, that leadership, and that judgment will be essential in helping you face and address the threats of today. Increasingly, those, increasingly addressing those threats will involve us fighting asymmetric wars alongside armies of failed and faltering states, fighting terrorist insurgent groups, and fighting micro-constituencies of fanatics and the disenfranchised, for whom religious conflict itself is the primary purpose. By way of example, the ruptures within the modern-day order of the Middle East have created a multitude of uncertain consequences. The breakdown of, of many of the region's state paradigms has served to enhance and magnify the power of warped ideologies. These conflicts and the ideologies they ultimately empower have led to the largest migration crisis in modern times, threatening not only the values but the very social fabric of Europe. The global battle ahead is therefore a clash of pluralism and respect for individual identity versus those who pursue fascist ideologies. Ideologies which are exclusionary, sectarian, and increasingly masked by a religious veneer. We must all come together, showing a firmness of conviction and belief 
strengthening bonds of unity and tolerance against the wishes of religious fascists who wish to divide and destroy. But rest assured, you are prepared for the task at hand. Your training is renowned for its excellence, and your directing staff are to be applauded for the strength of training you have received. That training has begun here, but will continue throughout your careers. You will learn from the situations you face. You will learn from the peace you preserve and defend, and also from the peace you will sometimes have to fight to win. But you will also continue to learn, most importantly, from those fighting for you and those fighting alongside you in different uniforms. While they will seek your guidance and expertise, they will also be in a position to guide and teach you in return. The steadfast application of your leadership code to principles of courage, discipline, respect for others, integrity, loyalty, and selfless commitment will be vital. Not only in winning the immediate military battles you will face, but also contributing to the successful conclusion of the ideological war we are in, in which we are all engaged. I wish you all good fortune as you meet your challenges, challenges head on. You have, a, you have highly rewarding careers ahead of you. You have already shown that you are capable of great success, and I wish you the very best in your future endeavors. With, with officers of your caliber operating at the front line, I believe strongly that our chances of securing greater peace in the world can only be enhanced. Thank you. Following his speech, the military parade started.
His Royal Highness then awarded the top officer cadets with the Sword of Honor, the Overseas Sword, and the Queen's Medal.
His Royal Highness then met the commissioning officers, praised them for their significant achievements throughout their time at the Royal Military Academy Sandhurst and wished them further success in their military careers. This year's commissioning platoon included Officer Cadet Abdullah bin Hamad Al Khalifa and Officer Cadet Hamad Isa Al Ramehi from the Kingdom of Bahrain. The Deputy President of the Supreme Council of Rashid Equestrian and Horse Racing Club, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and in the presence of the head of the Bahrain Royal Equestrian and Endurance Federation, Sheikh Faisal bin Rashid Al Khalifa, both presided over the 24th horse race of the season, which took place at the club's racing track in Rafa Sakhir. The races were held on the cup of Sheikh Faisal bin Rashid Al Khalifa, 
the BBK Bank Cup, Zaid Al Kubara Trade and Industry Group, and the Cup of the Deceased Yusuf Burisli. The races were attended by a number of horse racing sponsors and fans. At the end of the races, winners were crowned by Sheikh Isa bin Salman bin Hamad and Sheikh Isa bin Faisal bin Rashid Al Khalifa.